Okay, for our third and final dishcloth, once again, you will need scissors, a tapestry needle, size seven knitting needles, and that is 4.5 millimeters if I can get it to focus for you. It's not gonna focus. There we go, 4.5 millimeters. Worsted weight, or number four, cotton yarn, 100% cotton. So again, you look for the 100% cotton. You look for the number four or worsted weight yarn. I am using a peaches and cream yarn. And you'll need my pattern, which is linked here. And we are doing our final dishcloth, which is the corner to corner dishcloth. And you're going to be learning some new techniques for this one. But we were gonna, we're gonna start um, with just a cast on, a knitted cast on, like we learned last time. So, for a knitted cast on, we've gotta start with our slip knot, cross the short end over, Fold it forward against the long strand and pull that long strand through. There goes our slip knot. Okay. Pull it tight on the needle. And then let's get four stitches on there. Remember, we're doing this just like knitting. You follow the same techniques as knitting, the same ways of holding your needle until you have this first stitch pulled out. Then you swing your stitch needle around to catch it from behind, to give it a little twist. Then we go in through that second stitch and repeat the process. Pull it through, then give the stitch needle a little twist to catch it from behind. Pull it through, give the stitch needle a little twist to catch it from behind. There we go. Now we have four stitches and that is going to form our first corner. Let's look at the instructions. Row one, knit four. So we're just going to knit across. Row two is where we learn a new technique called yarn over. And that is abbreviated down here. First, let me show you. We cast on four stitches. Row one, we're going to knit four. Row two, we will knit two, yarn over, and knit to the end. Yarn over is abbreviated as YO. So let me show you those two rows. Knit one, two, that was with my left hand. Now let me show you with the right hand so you can remember both. Three, four. So that is row one. Row two. We knit two. Knit one, knit two. Now here comes that new technique, the yarn over. So what you do for the yarn over when you're holding the yarn in your right hand, you bring the yarn in between the needles as if you're getting ready to purl, but you don't purl. You hold the yarn in front and wrap it over the top of your working needle and then go into the next one to knit. So we're knitting to the end of the row. So you've got the yarn coming out the front as if you're going to purl, 
but you don't purl. You wrap it back over the working needle and just do a knit stitch at the back. What that does is it adds a new stitch and it leaves sort of a little decorative hole in your knitting. So that's how we have added a stitch. So every single row from here on out, we are going to add or what is called increase one stitch. Let me show you that again. And first, let me reference the pattern. Repeat row two until you have 44 stitches on the left needle. Abbreviated, not much different. Repeat row two until you have 44 stitches on the needle. And again, let me do this with my right hand one more time and then I will show it to you a couple times with the left hand. So you knit two. Knit one, knit two, then yarn over. You bring the yarn in between the two needles as if you're going to purl, but you don't purl. You go back in for a knit stitch. You wrap that yarn over the top, that's why it's called a yarn over, and back around for another knit stitch. So that added or increased another stitch. Now when you go to knit into these, you knit into them just as if they're a normal stitch. And then you knit to the end. Okay, I've showed that to you twice with my right hand. Now let me show you a yarn over with my left hand. Again, you move your working needle just the same. You go from left to right, front to back, and you just pick up the yarn. So you knit one, knit two. For the yarn over, when I'm holding it with my left hand, it's not as easy to push it forward between the needles, so what I like to do is I like to use my working needle and scoop it forward and then wrap it over the top. So let me show you that motion one more time. So I'm getting ready to yarn over so I scoop my yarn forward and it's wrapped back over the top. So I'm knitting to the end so I knit back into the next needle into the next stitch and we've got a yarn over. Let me show you that again on the other side. Remember, each one we knit two, we yarn over, and then we knit all the way to the end. So let me turn, we've turned it around. We knit one. Knit two. Scoop it forward for the yarn over. You could use your finger to manually bring it forward but since you're going to be wrapping it back around anyway, again, when you're holding it with your left hand, I think the yarn over is, easy. The yarn over is easiest just to scoop it forward and then keep it wrapped back over top. And that makes your yarn over. And then we knit to the end. As you can see, we are getting more and more stitches onto our needle with every single row that we knit. We started with four, we're now up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have doubled our stitches in just a few rows. So we're gonna keep doing that until we get all the way up to 44 stitches on the needle. Let me show you one more time with the left hand, one more time with the right hand, and then I will leave you to work on it for a minute.
Okay, hopefully you, like me, have reached 44 stitches on your needle and do you see what a nice little triangle that has made? And it has these decorative holes where you did the yarn overs. If yours does not look like mine, then something went wrong and you should rip it out. That is what we do as knitters when we make big mistakes, we rip it out. But if yours looks pretty much like mine, once you reach 44 stitches, then you have done it right. You do not have to start over. This is how it should look. So you learned how to increase stitches using these yarn overs, which leave this pretty decorative border. Now that we have it as big as we want it on the diagonal, it's time to learn to decrease or take away stitches but we don't wanna get rid of this pretty border. Even when we're decreasing, we wanna keep this pretty border. And so there's a special trick to that. Math, there is math in knitting. I am sorry to say for those of you who hate math that there is actually a, a reasonable amount of math in knitting, but it is usually very simple math. For instance, we wanna start shrinking these rows. So when we were growing this triangle, we grew by one stitch every row. We want to start shrinking by one stitch every row. But in order to keep this pretty decorative border, we still want to have a yarn over in there. So the answer to that problem is we will decrease by one stitch, then we will increase by one stitch to keep the decorative border, and then we will decrease by one stitch. So we will be decreasing twice on each row and increasing once. Two decreases, so that's negative two, plus one equals a negative one overall. So negative two plus one equals negative one, which means we will be decreasing one stitch each row overall, but we will be performing the action of decreasing twice and the action of increasing once. Now the way that looks on a pattern is this, row three. We will knit one, knit two together. I will show you how to do that, yarn over, then knit two together again. So this is where we do the minus one, plus one, minus one. Then knit to the end of the row. And we repeat that until we have four stitches left on the needle. Let me show you how this looks in abbreviations because here's where we get the more complicated abbreviations. We still have knit one. This is knit two together. That's what this abbreviation means knit two together, yarn over, knit two together. Let me show you how that knit two together looks in action along with the continued yarn over. Okay. So we knit one first, just a regular knit stitch. Now knit two together is exactly what it sounds like. Instead of just slipping your working needle into one stitch, you slip it through two stitches. You wanna make sure you're not splitting the yarn and you wanna make sure you get both stitches. You're going through both. So we are going through both stitches and then knitting through them just once to drop them both. So that combined those two stitches together to produce just one stitch. Then we do our yarn over to maintain our decorative border. So we subtracted one stitch, now we're adding one stitch. But then we subtract one more to make sure that we are shrinking our rows every row. So you don't knit through one, you knit two together. So it is binding those two stitches together and turning them in to one stitch on the next row. I'm going to knit to the end of this row and I'll turn it over and show you again with the left hand. 
Okay, I finished knitting our first decrease row. Now I'm going to switch the working yarn to my left hand and show you how to do these decrease stitches with your left hand. So we start out the row. This is our second decrease row. We start out again, knit one, then knit two together. Same action, you do it just like a knit stitch, but instead of catching one stitch in it, you go through two stitches at the same time. Knit two stitches together. So see, there's two stitches hanging from this new stitch because you have stitched them together. Now to maintain our decorative border, we add the knit, I mean the yarn over, and then to keep decreasing, we knit two together one more time. So I got my working needle through two stitches and we wrap the yarn from under to over and pull it through those two stitches at the same time. So knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then we just go back to knitting to the end. I'm gonna do that and I will demonstrate to you this decrease row one more time, just for good measure. Okay, I'm gonna show you the decrease row one more time, but as a quick note, if any of you watching are wondering how I got these stripes, did I do anything fancy to get these stripes? No, I did not. I am using a ball of yarn that is dyed in a fashion that it just naturally produces stripes. So if you like this appearance, you can look for yarn that is dyed in, a, in the way that it will produce stripes naturally. So I didn't have to do anything fancy, I just kept straight on knitting and it naturally created these stripes because of the way the yarn is dyed. So if you like that, you can buy self-striping yarn is what it's called. Let me demonstrate this decrease row one more time. So you knit one, then you knit two together. Gotta make sure you get your working needle through both stitches and drop them both. Then we keep our decorative border by doing a yarn over increase and then we knit two together one more time to make sure our row is shrinking by one stitch each time. There we go, and then we knit to the end. So keep doing this same decrease row again and again and again until you are down to just four stitches on your stitch needle. Okay, I am just popping in to do a little progress check with you really quick and show you how this should be looking. So as you are doing your decrease rows, we're maintaining this nice decorative border, but we're also shrinking it back down. We're on our way to having a nice symmetrical square. So it should be looking like this if you are following your row directions correctly. Okay, I am down to four. You probably noticed on those last few rows, when you were doing your knit two togethers, sometimes the yarn over from the previous row was part of your knit two together. And when you got down to your final four, you were knitting two together, the last two stitches on your needle. And that is fine, that is how it is supposed to work. So now we're down to our final four. We are going to knit these four across and then we're gonna bind it all off. So it's just like when you cast on, you knit one plain row of four before you started doing all your increases. Right before the bind off, we knit one row of four. 
and then it's just the same bind off that I've already shown you. You knit one, you knit the second, then you pull the first stitch over the top of the second stitch and it's bound off. You knit that third stitch and you pull the second stitch over top of the third stitch and it's bound off. And you knit the fourth stitch. Pull the third stitch over top of the fourth stitch and you're good. We're just going to trim this and pull it through and we are done with our corner to corner washcloth. You will have to get your tapestry needle and weave in the ends. Just follow the same directions for weaving in ends as we did with the previous washcloths. And then you have finished all three washcloths and you now know the most essential basic knitting techniques and you know how to read a knitting pattern. So from here on out, you can go grab some patterns. Now I'm going to um, grab one thing to show you as a recommendation if you feel like you're going to continue to pursue knitting. Okay, here's our finished washcloth again. I just have to weave in the ends with my tapestry needle. Now, if you really think that this is a craft for you and you want to keep going, but you want a good reference source that you can pull on as you come to new patterns and you come across things that you haven't learned yet, I highly recommend this book, Vogue Knitting, The Ultimate Knitting Book. It's basically an encyclopedia is how it's organized. So, it has a section at the beginning that talks about yarn and supplies. And then it goes into basic techniques where it reviews all of the sorts of basics that I covered in my Learn to Knit series and more. Then it has a section on making cables. I'm sure if you're interested in knitting, making these kinds of cool cables is something that you're interested in. There's a section on knitting lace. There is a section on how to use circular needles to do circular knitting. There's a section on directional knitting, which is some different techniques, some more advanced techniques. And then there's sections on other more advanced techniques that lead up into knitting actual clothing like sweaters. So if you want just an all-in-one reference book as you pursue new patterns, this is not cheap, it is an investment, but if you're serious about wanting to knit, this is what I recommend. There's also just tons of resources all over the internet. If you come across a stitch that you have never done before in a pattern, put it in Google and I can guarantee you will find YouTube videos and articles on blogs that tell you exactly how to do that stitch.